Welcome to Today Matters, a short devotional in God's Word. By the end of this short devotional, I pray that if you have ever disappointed someone or failed someone in some way, you will find hope and a second chance. Our God is always a God of second chances. It's amazing how smell of something can take you back to a memory that was either beautiful or could be very painful. Today, we are going to talk about a journey of one disciple and how I feel God used this to help a disciple named Peter heal from a painful memory. You see, we all have a story on how we got to a certain place that we are at. Some journeys are harder than others. Peter's journey is one that intrigues me and makes me ask questions. There's just something that inspires me about his tenacity in life and the journey it took for him to be molded into the leader that he became. If you've ever heard of any of my other Today Matters, you know a few things about me. One, I love stories. And two, I love cool things that happen in scripture that you wouldn't necessarily pick up on if you didn't really pay close attention. I mean, Peter's story is a story that most of you know a lot about. He was egotistical and he put his foot in his mouth a lot. He was a spitfire personality, and he didn't always think through what he was going to say before. Sometimes it just came out. We all know those personalities, right? However, he was the first to recognize that Jesus was the Son of God, had faith to walk on water, and after some hard knocks, he learned to love Jesus more than anything else in this world, and that's enough for me to want to get to know him and his story more. I'm going to set the stage. Peter washing his nets after a hard day of not catching anything. Jesus walks up to the shore where Simon Peter's boat was and takes the liberty of just getting in his boat and starts preaching to the crowds that were following him. Peter finishes washing his nets after that long day and sits down to listen to Jesus. After Jesus finishes, he looks at Peter and says, hey, get back in that boat and let, the, and let those nets down in the deep water. Crazy, right? He just finishes a hard day of work of not catching anything and he already cleaned his nets and the last thing Peter wants to do or any of us wants to do is to go back to work or get back in the boat and go out into deep waters and cast those nets. Well, he ended up doing what Jesus said to do, luckily. Peter got back into his boat, rowed back into deep waters and dropped the nets and did what Jesus asked before he even knew it, those nets were just bursting with fish. He had so many fish, he had to call out to his friends to come out and help so his nets didn't just break apart everywhere, which was a miracle in itself. After this experience, Peter started weeping and saying to the Lord, go away from me, Lord, I am sinful man. And Jesus replied, I'm sure with this huge smile on his face saying, don't be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. At this point, they, Simon Peter, John, and James, left everything to follow Jesus. Wow, what a cool introduction to being a disciple. However, if Peter only knew the life that was now ahead of him, how he would die and the legacy he would be leaving, I'm not sure he would know what to do with that information. As any of us, I'm not sure what we would do if we really knew what was ahead of us. But let's not forget the process it would take for him to get there. Luke 5:11 says, So they pulled their boats up on the shore, left everything and followed him. The sand is the place that the decision was made to follow Jesus, to leave everything behind, his job, his family, his life, his fishing, and friends to follow a rabbi that he barely knew. You will find that Peter nearly goes three and a half years of learning, observing, protecting, defending, and truly walking in the dust of his rabbi, Jesus. Peter was a strong man and a strong leader. Peter was the first to declare that Jesus was the son of God, Matthew 16, 16. And he was the first to open up his big mouth and tell Jesus that he would not be arrested or put to death, Matthew 16, 22 through 24, out of his lack of understanding of what Jesus really needed to do in the crucifixion. Peter was the first and only to step out in faith and walk on water 
to go to Jesus. He protected Jesus in the garden when the soldiers tried to arrest him and actually cut off one of the soldier's ears. Oh my gosh. I think Peter was ready to try to take on the world and conquer it just to protect Jesus. With all of this in Peter's mind, defending and trying to protect Christ, no wonder Peter reacted the way he did when Jesus said that he would deny him three times before the rooster crowed. This was the furthest thing from Peter's mind and probably came as a bit of an insult as well. He was probably thinking, haven't I proven myself to you yet, Jesus? I would never do that. We now come to the place in Peter's life when his courage fails. His strong personality turns to fear. You see, after Jesus was arrested, he was taken into the house of the high priest. Peter waited outside the gates. When Jesus was taken, Peter sat down and warmed his hands by a fire. Scripture wants us to take notice of this, that it was a charcoal fire. This was not usual for warming of hands. This was more for cooking food and such. The smell is a different type of smell, and we'll come back to this a little bit later on. There was a little girl there, and he asked, she asked Peter, hey, were you the man with Jesus? And he said, no. Soon another came and asked the same question, and Peter said, no, I'm not with that man. Yet another one who recognized Peter being with Jesus asked the same question and Peter replied, man, I don't know what you're talking about. At this point, Jesus had just come out of the high priest's house and heard what Peter had said. It was at that moment that the rooster crowed and turned and looked straight to Peter. And then he remembered Jesus saying, before the rooster crows today, you will disown me three times. Peter walked away and it says in scripture that he just wept bitterly. I couldn't even imagine. Keep in mind the fire that was the last interaction with Jesus before he was crucified. No closure for Peter, no apologies, just the crucifixion to follow. Peter's sifting came in the form of a public denial of the Lord at that moment. I can't begin to imagine how humiliating it must have been for him when he heard the rooster crow and remembered the Lord earlier prophesying of his denial. He'd always been so brave, so dauntless, but suddenly even the accusation of a servant girl saying that he might have been with him, he was intimidated by that and denied it. Peter had to be brought down out of himself in order to be used by God. The crucifixion came and went, and Peter was never the same. Jesus rose from the dead, and Peter went back to his old way of life. I don't know those days and what they looked like for Peter. Scripture stays pretty quiet or silent about his journey during those dark days of regret. They were only a few days, but they were a few days of deep regret. We do know that he ended up going back into his family trade, fishing. I'm sure he felt like he was a failure and couldn't go back into ministry. At this point, we are going to see some similar events start taking place. Peter back into his old way of life as a fisherman, and now I set the same stage of Jesus. It's almost like deja vu a little bit because it's calling him back into ministry again, and it's setting the exact same stage when he first was called into ministry. Peter had a long night of trying to catch fish and nothing. It was early in the morning and they saw a figure of a man yelling from the shore saying, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. And the man responded, throw your nets on the right side of the boat and you will find some. At this point, they didn't know that it was Jesus saying these things to them. You see, Jesus was setting the scene when Peter was first called into ministry. It's amazing how loving our God is and how gentle he is in dealing with our failures. Out of desperate measures, they listened to the man from the shore and cast their nets on the right side. When they did, they were unable to haul in the nets because it was so outnumbered with so many fish. And then they realized it was Jesus. Peter jumped out of the boat, just like he did in the very first story of Jesus being, of Peter being called into ministry. And the others followed him to the shore. There was a large fire that Jesus prepared before they got to the shore. 
this was not just a normal fire. It was a fire waiting for them, and it was a charcoal fire, the same kind of fire that Peter was warming his hands on outside the gates of the priests. I believe that just like smell that will take you back to a memory, Jesus was taking Peter back to his greatest failure, the event that crushed his spirit and took him back to his old way of life, fishing. Peter had huge confidence in self before that night. However, the night of the charcoal fire, everything changed. Jesus knew that if he was going to be able to withstand all that he knew Peter was going to have to face in the future, he needed to be healed inside out. And he needed to learn how to have the same kind of confidence. However, this time in Jesus, his foundation, instead of his own strength. Jesus already had some fish and bread cooking on the fire, most likely representing the miracle of the feeding of the 4,000 and 5,000. You see, Jesus does not need our help. However, he asks us to participate in his work. He asked Peter to place a few of the fish that he had just caught onto the fire and went on to say, Peter, do you love me? And we would suggest more than these fish. It doesn't say this in scripture, more than your old way of life. And as you know, he went on to ask Peter two more times if he really loved him. Jesus knew what was ahead for Peter. At this point, Jesus reinstated Peter into ministry through this conversation. And Jesus gave hope to all of us who fail, knowing that there's so much hope for us for the future if we just surrender to who we are. If you've ever felt like a failure or like you failed too much to be used by God again, we are heading into a campaign to bring more people into God's kingdom. And you are a big part of the success of that story. You'll never know the impact that you have on the life of those around you if you don't allow that brokenness to be healed by God and used by God. Jesus wants you to place your two fish in the charcoal fire, to allow and to participate in the ministry he wants you to be a part of, and to strengthen your brothers and sisters during turbulent times in faith. You are loved, my friends.